Greetings everyone and welcome to No BS Baking. You got JP here. Now everyone knows that baking is a science and no matter what you're trying to bake or create, it's based on math. It can be confusing, frustrating, especially with all the different channels and websites trying to teach you their particular way to solve baking problems. In this real short video, I'm going to give you the solution for calculating almost anything you may need when it comes to baking with one simple solution. So without further delay, let's get into it. So when I went to school, we never learned what they refer to as Baker's math. It was referred to as ratio and proportion. So now what I want to do is I want to show you the full power as this can be used as your go-to method for most everything you need to figure out. So it all starts with organizing your thoughts and laying out a quick cross grid like this. Now when you're using ratio and proportion, it is important for ensuring that you're calculating apples with apples and oranges with oranges. In other words, don't mix up different types of measurements, keep them the same. So now let's look at a few examples. In this first example, we followed an online recipe and used 21 degrees Celsius water, but our dough temperature came out too high at 32 or almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to adjust our water temperature for a dough that with the same ingredients, the same mix time, will finish out about 24 or about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's how we do the math. 24 times 21 divided by 32, and our answer is 16. We need 16 degree water for this dough. Now here are just a few more examples. Take your time, walk through them, work them out on paper, and you can see how easy ratio and proportion is. Until now, we've looked at direct proportion, but now we're going to look at indirect proportion. So your bread's coming out too slow, your, your room is warm enough, but the dough is taking 90 minutes to final proof when you use 9 grams of dried yeast. Now, you want to increase your yeast to give you closer to 60 minutes of a final proof time. So you lay your headings out, you do your math, and the number comes out to 6. Now you know that less yeast isn't going to speed things up, so what's wrong with this math? The answer is the calculation needs to be solved using indirect proportion. So let's take a look at this problem from the indirect proportion side of things. We take 90 minutes, we multiply that by 9 grams and then divide it by 60. Now you can see the answer is 14 grams. Now this makes a lot of sense. We need to increase our yeast to 14 grams for a 60 minute proof. Solved. So just keep the following in mind when using ratio and proportion. If you get a weird number using the direct method, just simply flip to the indirect and see how that works. If you still can't get it to work, then either you made an error or there is some math that you need to look into as solving the problem maybe beyond ratio and proportion. Number two, remember not all baking solutions will be solved with one equation. Sometimes you need to figure out one thing first and then use that answer to calculate further. I have a video coming on pan types and recipe modifications that walk, walks through this exact thing. Keep organized and put headings on your graph as it really does help. Remember the apples with apples and oranges to oranges. Uh, don't try to overcomplicate or expect miracles from your equation. Play with it. 
I only gave a few examples of what you can use ratio and proportion for when baking, cooking, and working with recipes. It is made for the kitchen. Well, thanks for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please give me a like and a subscribe. And uh, be sure to check out some of these other videos that I've got listed over here. So until next time, we'll see you at No BS Baking.